In this uh, session, we are going to see the different uh, types of options that are available to the dying patient. We will also see what is the different management uh, techniques that are today being employed in order to take care of the dying patient and also explore some of the core principles of managing the dying. We will also see the different options that are available for the dying patient. To begin with, let us start like uh, the different criteria that influence management of the dying patient. For example, it all depends on how of dying, where of dying and who of dying. Coming to the how of dying, management of the dying patient depends on what disease condition that the patient is suffering from. For example, research results showed that what diseases earlier people were dying of are completely different from today what they are dying of. You can see the results that are given. In 1900, Brim et al. in their research have shown that the top 5 causes of death and they found that influenza and pneumonia topped the list, followed by tuberculosis, then gastritis and then only heart disease and stroke. But whereas in a recent research study, Minow and Smith has found that the top 5 causes of death in the year 2000 are heart disease followed by cancer, then stroke and COPD and finally accidents. So, depending on the type of disease that the dying patient is suffering from, certainly management varies. For example, if it is to do in the case of pneumonia or TB, then care of the patient will involve like you know taking care of the wounds of the patient and also seeing to that this patient is segregated because these are infectious diseases. And also the treatment uh, uh, places will also be uh, placed outside the city because they are communicable diseases. But whereas today's top uh, 5 causes of death are not infectious based like the case of heart disease where here the patient uh, need to be closer to the hospital setting and also say for example in ICU in units the heart patient can be treated along with patients suffering from other diseases. So, the kind of problem that the patient is suffering from is in influences the kind of management that the health professionals have to take care of. Another important factor that influences management of the dying patient is where people are dying today. Earlier people were dying more in their homes, but whereas today the place has shifted more to the hospitals and the nursing homes. In the uh, graphical representation of the pie diagram, you can see where people are dying today. And in this uh, pie diagram, you can see that about 57 of them are dying in the hospitals and 17 percent are dying in the nursing homes and only 20 percent of the population are dying in the homes. So, if it is at the homes or if it is at the hospitals or nursing homes, especially old age uh, uh, homes, then the kind of management certainly varies. Another factor that influences the kind of management of the dying patient is who is taking care of them. Research results showed that the caregivers for uh, 35 percent of them are the children and in about 30 percent the top caregivers are the spouses and only in 9 percent of the cases the caregivers are either parents or sibling. So, who is going to care for the patient is also an important factor. For example, if it is a uh, mother is caring for a grown up uh, son. Now, naturally when uh, things like dressing and other uh, important functions have to be taken care of, then certainly they have to involve more nurses. But on the other hand, it is the same sex member who is acting as a caregiver, then more involvement of the caregiver can be managed.
Let us see what are the core management principles of the dying patient. Now, the healthcare professionals looking after the dying, they have to show respect and to the dignity of the patient as well as to the family members or caregivers. They should also show sensitivity to the patient and the family and also the caregivers. Apart from that, they have to ensure that they are giving proper interventions in order to reach patient goals. For example, since they are the dying patient, uh, being alive is no longer the goal, but seeing that they are in comfort is one of the patient goals. And the healthcare professionals should also take care to see that they have enough knowledge to alleviate the pain and suffering of the dying. Another core principle is to see that they respect the decisions of the patient and the family members regarding when not to agree for a treatment method. The healthcare professional should be aware that the patient and the family have a right to refuse treatments and they have to behave accordingly. Coming to the psychological, social and, and spiritual needs of the patients, the healthcare professionals should ensure that they assess these needs and not only that, take care to manage the needs and in case they are not capable enough to take care of those needs, they should at least refer to the proper professional. For example, a dying person might have some spiritual needs. So, at that time, depending on the spiritual background of the patient, the healthcare professional need to refer to an say a clergyman or to a guru and so forth. Coming to the other core principles of management of the dying patient, the healthcare professional should also keep open the research possibilities and they have to uh, encourage and cooperate for professionals doing research. There is lot of research that is done to identify what really dying patients want, that is what kind of care that they would prefer you get the results of Singer and his associates who pointed out five important components of quality end of life care and uh, of the five management of pain and uh, symptoms top the list. And the second one that the patients really look uh, for is avoiding inappropriate prolongation of dying. Third one is helping them to achieve a sense of control and, uh, and then relieving their burden. And finally, the healthcare professionals uh, also should try to strengthen the relationship with loved ones. Now, as Elizabeth Ross says, there are five stages that a dying patient goes through, the stage of denial, the stage of anger, then the stage of bargaining, then the stage of depression and finally acceptance. So, the healthcare professionals have to identify in which stage the person uh, who is going to die is in and try to give appropriate uh, interventions. For example, if the person is in the depression stage, then the healthcare professionals have to spend extra time trying to reassure the dying patient that this is a common phase and that they are also going to overcome that. And uh, another challenging aspect is that not all dying patients go through the same stages in the same progression. So, it is even more challenging for the healthcare professionals in managing with these dying patients. They have to uh, identify the stage that they are in and many times these dying patients may not experience any other stages. For example, take the case of a cancer. Uh, person suffering from cancer and uh, if the person is diagnosed in the last stages when there is acute pain, then many times the diagnosis of death in fact uh, makes the person you know feel relieved and uh, such patients will be looking forward to dying 
and uh, so then it becomes quite easy for the uh, management of such patients. And uh, for such patients, the health professionals have to take care of their spiritual needs and depending on the religious background of the dying patient, they have to recommend uh, proper professionals to take care of them. Taking care of the dying patient also involves uh, uh, education, education of the patient as well as education of the family members. And uh, we have already seen how dying trajectories help in educating the patient and the family members. So, if the healthcare professionals take time to spend with the patient and the families discussing with them about the progression of the disease and also showing dying trajectories and discussing the course of uh, progression of the disease will make the patient and the family members they will know what to expect. And also educating the family members and the patient will help clear their confusion and it will also make them feel understood and being taken care of. Spending lot of time especially in the initial stages in educating about the disease condition and the process of dying will be very beneficial in the management of the dying patient. Management of the dying patient also involves the what is the disease condition, the present state of disease of the patient and uh, also the kind of symptoms that the dying patient is showing. To ascertain the disease condition and also to see the level of activity of the dying patient, there is something called as activities of daily living scale. Using this scale, the healthcare professional can uh, gather important information from the family members regarding whether the patient is able to get in and get out of a bed or a chair, whether the patient is able to use toilet, whether the patient is able to do bath on his or her own and also the capacity to dressing up and also eating abilities. So, these will be identified and basing on the activities, the intensity of the disease is ascertained and also basing on these uh, daily living activities uh, scale results, the kind of management that has to be taken uh, care of will be decided by the healthcare professional. Uh, you can see the graphically how it is shown that is the adjusted proportion of people with the trouble getting in and out of bed or chair. In here you have about 5 diseases and you can see the red dots that is the cancer patients suffering from cancer. Initially there are very few people who cannot get out of bed or chair, but as the disease or as time elapses, there are more and more who are not able to get out of that is in other words they are bedridden. But whereas uh, compared with diabetes and other disorders, the patients are more or less in the same state. So, by doing such uh, assessments, the healthcare professionals see what kind of treatment that has to be given and what to expect. For example, in this case, they know beforehand that a cancer patient in the initial phases, there is not much uh, care to be taken off, but as the disease progresses, then the person is going to get bedridden and lot more care is required. And coming to the symptoms of uh, dying, that is just before uh, say one week of death, the patient will be starting to have various symptoms. So, knowing these symptoms also will help the healthcare professional to decide the kind of management that has to be taken and also it will prepare the family members to uh, for the impending death. The some of the symptoms that are listed are fatigue, 
So, when this is indicated then the healthcare professional can bring in a respirator at that time and help the patient. Other symptoms are drowsiness or insomnia. Some people uh, will feel very, very sleepy and almost most of the day they will be sleeping, but others they will have very great difficulty in getting to sleep. And there will be also some sort of confusion on part of the dying patient and of course, there will be lot of anxiety and uh, of all there will be intense pain and suffering in many cases. And just before uh, 48 hours before death, there are also certain symptoms that have been found out. That is these patients will have orderly loss of senses and desires. To begin with first they will lose uh, hunger. And uh, after that, they will have loss of thirst. Actually, many patients will be wanting to, uh, you know, sip some water. But uh, what physicians say is, this is not thirst, but it is because of dryness of mouth. So, there is loss of thirst and after this, one can see that there is loss of speech. After loss of speech, there is loss of vision and finally, when hearing and touch are also lost, then it means that is imminent and it is very near. So, knowing these symptoms will help the uh, healthcare professional to bring in or to start other medical interventions. Let us see what are the various institutional systems that are available to take care of the dying patient. The first one that is available is the traditional hospital and the second one is palliative care. So, the traditional hospital system, the care begins with plotting the dying trajectories and these dying trajectories are of three kinds. The first one is the swift death which do not have lot of uh, ailing and there is death quickly happens. And uh, the second one is the lingering while dying death, where slowly there is a degeneration and slowly the patient over a period of time finally dies. But whereas the third uh, type of uh, dying trajectory that is the entry and re-entry dying trajectory where for example, people suffering from heart attack, they uh, suddenly they get this heart attack and they are admitted to the hospital and their functioning level becomes very low. But because of medical intervention, they after some time of treatment, their functioning level is improved, they get become ok and then they leave out of the hospital. But uh, after some time, it might take some months or even some years in some cases, they again get the attack when they are uh, that is sort of re-enter and then they get treated and this might go on for a couple of times. So, this is a third kind of dying trajectory. So, the hospital staff depending on the drying trajectory, they try to give the kind of uh, appropriate treatment to the dying patient. And this traditional uh, healthcare system is curative in nature. That is they try to treat the patient and with all possible means, they will try to help the patient to live as long as is possible. They either use medications or they use uh, state of the art advanced uh, uh, medical procedures, they might use surgery or they can combine all these three and here the emphasis is on curing the patient and also to uh, relieve the pain and suffering. Going to the next healthcare uh, system that is available today is a palliative care. Palliative care is defined as any intervention designed not to cure, but to promote dignified dying. Now, when research is done identifying what are the fears of uh, dying and death, researchers found that many people fear death because they fear a sense of loss of control before dying and they also fear the what kind of condition they will go into. 
they might have seen many elderly people just before death they lose control and they lead vegetative childlike life. So, in order as a response to overcome these fears today palliative care will help dignify dying of the patient and this palliative care includes three aspects. One is training the staff, the second one is uh, modifying hospital structures and the third one which is increasingly becoming famous is the hospice. Coming to training the staff, now the uh, medical staff they have to be specifically trained in order to deal with the extra challenges of treating a dying patient. They have to be trained especially to for pain medication and uh, relieving of suffering. Apart from that they should also be trained regarding the ethical aspects that are involved in uh, withdrawal of treatment. And the third one is they have to be additionally trained to how to communicate with the patient as well as the family members. Apart from that these healthcare professionals need also to be trained on the cultural and religious backgrounds. So, they should have uh, information regarding different cultures and uh, different religious concept of death so that they will behave uh, appropriately with the patients. For example, if we take uh, Muslims, they might uh, indicate that they want to change the direction of the bed so that the head of the dying patient is turned towards Mecca. So, healthcare professionals should be sensitive uh, and uh, respond appropriately according to the dying patients and the family's needs. So, such kind of uh, training is today given to the hospital staff in addition to their uh, normal training. Going on to the next one that is modifying hospital structures. As is said earlier hospitals are curative based, but today they are also trying to identify the need to have a palliative care. So, hospitals today are modifying their structures and having a separate unit or ward for palliative care. So, here they have two uh, different set of uh, staff, one taking care of the curative needs of the patients and another the palliative care. Going on to the third system that is available today that is hospice. Now, hospice started in the US in Connecticut in the year 1974. And this hospice kind of treatment is devoted to allowing the dead to occur in a uh, safe and uh, pleasing environment and also to allow death to occur in a natural way. So, the hospice workers are also trained in taking psychological care of the dying and also the family members. And here in hospice care bereavement counseling is also involved. So, it means that even after death of the patient the hospice workers continue to work with the family in helping them overcome grief. However, deciding when to have hospice or not have hospice is a challenging issue not only to the person who is dying and the family, but also to the medical staff because hospice will come into effect only when the medical staff diagnose that this particular problem can no longer be curable. So, when they want to prepare the patient for impending death and when they are clear that death is imminent and little can medicine do to help or relieve the pain or suffering of the patient then only hospice can be recommended. And uh, there are many issues that are involved in hospice because some patients might want to die at home or some might decide to die in the nursing home. 
If in the case of dying in a hospital, there is potential for better management of the physical aspects of dying because lot of medical equipment is available as and when the it is required, the medical staff can use those equipment. But if uh, dying has to happen at home, such facility will not be available or there will be delay in offering such facilities. And in the, for the case of dying in a hospital, there is no fear of burdening your family with care that is uh, especially financial aspects and also privacy to vent your own feelings uh, without uh, family members around is possible in a hospital setting. But whereas in the, within the family, the dying patient has to continuously look at the suffering of the family members and also they will have this fear that uh, they are overburdening the family members if dying has to take care in a home setting. So, taking in mind or keeping in mind all these issues, uh, deciding where to have hospice facility has to be taken care of. Coming to taking control of dying, people today can have what we call as advanced directives. Advanced directives are written documents with specific instructions regarding when to stop life prolonging treatments. So, these are usually legalized by a notary and uh, example of these advanced directives are do not hospitalize orders for example, which are called DNH. So, when the patient uh, prepares such an uh, uh, directive, then even when the dying patient's condition has become critical, even then the family is not supposed to hospitalize them. So, it is a decision that is taken by the dying patient not to get hospitalized. So, today we have many such written di advanced directives and another example is living will. Another one more example is uh, having a power of attorney where the dying patient will specifically identify a family member or a friend in as the case requires to take care of decisions that are uh, to do with uh, whether to continue a life prolonging treatment or not. So, the patient might be having a doubt whether during the last days whether consciousness will be there or not. So, in such a situations in advance only the patient can uh, prepare this uh, power of attorney and can designate another person to take decisions uh, on his behalf. So, like that today there are more uh, and more uh, facilities that are available to help the dying patient to have some sort of control on the dying process. Apart from that there is also this growing debate regarding uh, can we take decisions regarding when to die and that is the case of euthanasia. So, in this lecture we have seen how to manage a dying patient, we have seen what are the core principles that are involved in management of the dying patient, we have also seen the different institutional structures that are available today that is either hospital or palliative care and also the upcoming facility of hospice. In addition to that people today are also able to make decisions when to die. In some countries they have legalized people uh, opting for uh, physician assisted death. So, we can say that dying today is not as uncontrollable or uh, as it was earlier. <laughs>